Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. So the first video in my new lit garage. It's pretty awesome. I mean it might look dim on camera but it is really bright in here. So today we're actually going to be working on my rack and bushings. So I got them from Honda. I got another washer. So that's basically what we're going to work on. I'm going to see if I can pull out the rack without having to disconnect the header or the shift linkage. So hopefully I can do that. If not, I'm going to see if I can figure out another way to kind of get at the passenger side just to do this um, rack end bushing. So let's just get changed and get to work. All right, so first things first is I'm going to test to see how far this turns to the right and to the left just to make sure that I can get the steering rack centered because I do want to pull the steering rack out. So that's one. That's two. And two in a little bit. That's basically the full turns. So, so that should be straight. Yep. So about two turns. And also, I wanted to take note of where the, I guess the steering column is connected to the pinion. So. I noticed that there's that red mark there, so that should be pretty much where it's supposed to be connected. Since it's already marked, I'm good with that, and I'm just going to leave it as is. Alright guys, so how you would start getting the steering rack out is basically you have to disconnect your um, tie rods. So I'm just going to disconnect the tie rods from here. These are brand new ones. So there's a cotter pin under here. Uh, as you know, I recently replaced mine, so now I have to replace these cotter pins as well. There you go, cotter pins out. Then you gun this nut out. It's a 17, so. Just like that, comes out. And then, usually you would use a ball joint separator or something to kind of get this out. But since I've already done this before, I should be able to whack it out with my rubber mallet, like that. So a rubber mallet won't damage the threads or in any way. So I'm just going to repeat the process on the other side. All right, so the next thing to disconnect is basically that, um, uh, I guess, the steering U-joint right there. So you want that bottom 10 millimeter bolt to be disconnected. So I'm just going to rotate the steering so that I can see the bolt. And then I'm going to start undoing it. All right, as you can see, the bolt is visible now. And this is usually just... Um, torque down to 16 foot pounds so it shouldn't be too tight so just kind of get it in there and wrench it off all right next while you're under here these are the two bolts that you gotta remove for disconnecting it from the driver's side and then there's two bolts here that you gotta disconnect on the passenger side and that's it for the steering rack and it should just drop down usually you would have to remove the shift linkage and I guess some parts of the exhaust but I think there's enough clearance here for me to drop it down and just loop it over to one side. But I'm going to probably have to go and turn the wheel to one side and, and vice versa for each one to try to maneuver it out. So I'm just going to get right to it and try to do this. If I can't do it, then I might have to take apart the exhaust and the shift linkage. But I'm trying to avoid that. All right, so I didn't actually maneuver the whole rack out. This gave me enough clearance to kind of work at it. So all I have to do is cut the zip tie for the uh, boot and the bushing should be behind there. Um, and then I should be able to get this tie rod off from, I guess, this end. All right, guys, so I managed to get it out. It's much easier than the last time. Uh, so there it is. As you can see inside here, there's a little white thing. That's the bushing. I'm guessing it's worn. I actually don't hear any uh, clunking or anything as I'm trying to wiggle it right now. But then again, the uh, steering rack is stuck in there. So I'm going to go under and try to turn the pinion so that it gets this end all the way in so that I could uh, uh, pull this rack end bushing out. All right, there you go. The um, I guess the steering rack, I managed to kind of rotate it upside down. So then the pinion's facing downwards so I could spin it. So I spun the rod all the way inside. Now I'm going to get, I guess, some small screwdrivers and try to pick this bushing out. All right, so I got the rack end bushing out. This took a while. So you see these little dimples on the top. 
Um, what I did was I pushed them in and I moved them to the side. And then once both sides are kind of free from those little dots on the top here, um, you see those holes? So once it's um, kind of free from there, I just, you know, turn the, the pinion so that this pops out and then it started coming out a little bit. Then I got a screwdriver and then it just popped the rest out. To be honest, this looks fine. This, I'm gonna compare it in a sec with the brand new one. All right, so here's a side-by-side -side comparison with the brand new one versus the old one. And I'm just gonna try and take a look to see how worn this old one really is. Honestly, it looks absolutely the same. It doesn't look like there's any wear at all in this old one. So, to be honest, I, I don't know if this will fix my issue. It might just be that the, the steering rack needs to be adjusted. But we'll see once this is put together. All right, so I got the new uh, rack end bushing in. And the only way I could get it in was basically push it with the back of one screwdriver over here and then push the top like that. So I just used two backs and pushed it real tight and that slipped in. I was trying pliers and all that stuff and none of it worked. Um, it just kept slipping, but I managed to finally get them in in the, the two little dimples in there. So the rack and bushings are in. All right, so everything is put back together, the rack and bushings in. Um, now I'm gonna test out the steering to make sure that it doesn't clunk anymore. The car isn't on the ground. I'm trying to do this in the air because I don't wanna have to lift it back up, but obviously any sound will be more prominent when you're on the ground. So I still hear a little bit of that clunking. So I don't think it was the rack and bushing. It's likely I have to adjust the steering rack. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the steering rack anyways, just to make sure while the car is still off the ground. So in order to adjust the steering rack, you need a 40 millimeter wrench of some sort or um, to, to break this lock nut. So I'm gonna go and get my 40 millimeter uh, adjustable wrench and fit it in here and try to break this. And this here is a 14 millimeter. So basically how you would adjust this is once it's broken, you tighten it all the way in to about three foot pounds, so I guess hand tight. Then you loosen it, and then you tighten it again to three foot pounds, and then you back it off about 15 degrees. That's basically for the 1.6 model, which is the SI model. Um, the other racks, like the DX, CX racks, about the same. So this is all about feel. So I'm gonna go ahead and try this and see if it fixes the clunking noise. So guys, since I've been under the car, I noticed that the axle seal area still leaks. If you notice it right there, the drop right on the axle, right there. Whoops. So, let's get a closer look. So the driver's side axle is still leaking. Looks like it's leaking from here to here and it's just dripping around there. And basically, I'm thinking that the diff bearing is probably gone. Here's one of the things that you sh like I'm checking to see if the diff bearing is gone. It's just to see if there's play on this side. So what I do is just put my hand here and I basically move it. And you can feel that there is play and you could see you probably can't see, but because of my shaky hands, but you could see the passenger side axle also moving. It shouldn't have this much play. So I think, like as you can see, look at all that oil as I'm holding onto that axle. And I should have known this already sooner. Look at that big puddle. It's been leaking because I've been moving the car around and shaking things. So as you shake this axle, you can feel that there's play up and down, left and right. Essentially, there's a lot of play. 
And that shouldn't, there shouldn't be that much play. Essentially, I think the diff bearing is pretty much gone. It looks like I'm gonna have to pull this transmission out again and basically tear it apart and inspect the bearings. Um, yeah, as you can see, oil just dripped right there. You just, it just, look at that. It shouldn't, this shouldn't happen if you just shake the, the axle. So, yeah, I have to tear apart the case and just inspect it when I get a chance. But for now, I'm just going to leave it. But it kind of makes sense that it's been like this for a while. So, the transmission may be gone. Um, if you look at it, look at all this grease underneath here. Um, so, when I got the car, it's already been like this for a very long time. It's a lot of caked on grease everywhere. And that's probably from the transmission just spewing like fluid everywhere so yeah I'm probably just gonna tear it apart have a look to see if I could uh, fix it with a rebuild kit which isn't cheap um, but these transmissions are hard to find nowadays um, but if I can't rebuild it I'll probably have to go and upgrade it to a hydro transmission so Hopefully it doesn't have to come to that. So the car is actually on the ground now and I'm trying to check the clunking to see if there's any more clunking. And there really isn't much clunking. I do hear a little bit of... A, a certain point I hear it, I guess. But uh, overall, it's not too noisy. It is just the steering column. The U-joint in the steering column. Yeah, I think that's good. I think that's uh, that fixed the issue. All right, there you go, guys. So firstly, I adjusted the steering rack with a big wrench. Uh, a lot of you guys are probably wondering if you need the Honda tool to do it. On the EF applications, you don't need it. There's a lot of clearance under there. All you do is put this under there, crack it, get a 14 millimeter and adjust it. That's about it. Look at the Honda, Honda manual for the instructions on how to adjust it, but you don't need the special Honda tool to do it. The EGEK applications is a lot tighter in there and you would need it, but the EF, you don't. Um, so I basically did install the rack and bushing. It's a lot of work for a crappy little $30 part. Um, would I do it again? Probably not. I mean, when I compared the two, my old one and the new one, it, it didn't look like it was worn anyways. The clunking is gone. Um, well, a lot of it. It's not as noisy as before. And I don't know what it is. I don't know if it was the adjustment or if it was the rack and bushing. Like I said, the rack and bushing looked completely fine. Maybe needed a little bit more grease or something. But other than that, it was fine. So that's basically the install, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and hope it helps you guys out. I know I didn't film a lot of it, but it was really just getting out of, up from under the car and then back into the car and then going under, going to the side. It was a lot of rolling around and it's really hard to capture that on camera. But um, if you haven't already guys, please comment, like, and subscribe, and maybe share the video. As always guys, I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.